Hello, and welcome to my presentation on the summary essay. You may be asking yourself, is a summary essay the same as a summary? Well, I venture to say that a summary essay is a bit longer. For example, a summary can be only one paragraph. An entire essay has an introduction, a body, and a conclusion. So that is a difference. If you are asked to write a summary essay, then this is a presentation for you. So let's begin. What is the purpose of a summary essay? To convey to others an understanding of a text you have read without their having to read it themselves, or to demonstrate your understanding of a reading. This is particularly true in preparing for research. Here's some of the key features to remember. It is shorter than the source. For example, if your article is 15 pages long, your summary will not be 15 pages. Your summary essay might only be one to two pages. Secondly, it repeats the ideas of the source in different phrases and sentences. This is essentially paraphrasing. You are writing in your own words what the author has said in their article, book, or other writing. Here are more key features to be mindful of. One, you must represent your source accurately and comprehensively with as little of your own interpretation as possible. You are focusing on what the writer actually said, not what you think they did say or what they should have said. Secondly, you should not add your own examples and explanations, for instance. Remember, summary essays are similar to abstracts in research papers and should also be written in a third person objective style. So remember to be objective. Be as a reporter and only report the facts, not your interpretation of the facts or what appears in the article. The introduction of a summary essay is usually one paragraph. It contains a one sentence thesis statement that sums up the main point of the source. This is not a thesis statement that you are coming up with. It is not your main point. It is the main point of your source. And we'll take a look at how to distinguish that in a second. Remember to focus on the main idea or ideas that the author presents in his or her work. In the introduction, you want to remember to include this information. The introduction gives a title of the source using APA or MLA guidelines. That means you have to write the title of the article and the author of the work that you're talking about. Provides the name of the author of the source. Sometimes also provides pertinent background information about the author of the source or about the text to be summarized. We'll take a look at that in a second when we talk about an article written by Sandra Cisneros where her background becomes important to the story that she wrote. The introduction should not offer your own opinions or evaluation of the text you are summarizing. I cannot stress that enough. A summary essay essay is objective, not subjective, meaning it does not include your own ideas or interpretations, but it strictly focuses on what the author has written. All right, so here's an example of a possible introduction for a summary essay. You might want to pause the video here to actually read this example. Okay, I'll read it aloud. In the autobiographical essay, Only Daughter, Sandra Cisneros reflects on her childhood experiences growing up in a large Mexican-American family as the only daughter among six brothers and how those experiences subsequently influenced her career as a writer. She focuses her narrative around the wordplay inherent in the phrases only daughter and only a daughter as she anthropomorphically illustrates the cultural preference for sons as exhibited by her father's early treatment of her as a young girl. Eventually, Cisneros connects with her father as an adult woman and feels validated by him as a renowned author and his only daughter. So the body of a summary essay can be one or more paragraphs, and it paraphrases and condenses the original piece. In your summary, be sure that you include important data but omit minor points. 
Include one or more of the author's examples or illustrations because these will bring your summary to life. Remember, you're trying to avoid direct quotes, although you might find it helpful to include a direct quote. But remember, you're writing in your own words as much as possible. For example, here is potentially how you could set up a summary essay. Here's an outline. You know you need an introduction and your thesis statement will be the last line of the introduction. For the body of the summary essay, you're going to find point one from the story. Point number one from the story, and I should say the main point from the story. As a child, Cisneros felt isolated from her father and brothers as the only daughter, which fueled her career as a writer. Note this point comes from the beginning of the story. Point number two, again from the story, Cisneros' father encouraged the sons to attend college to avoid menial jobs but deemed it an ideal place for Cisneros to meet a husband as the only daughter. So that is how you would summarize main point number two from the story. Also note, this point comes from around the middle of the story. In point number three from the story, at a family holiday gathering, Cisneros' aging father finally acknowledges her accomplishments with excitement and acceptance in contrast to his previous disapproval of her non-traditional life choices. And where do you think this point comes from? Yes, the end of the story. So, in a summary essay, you want to find the main points from the beginning, the middle, and the end of the story to include in your summary. Remember, you may not have space to include every single point, but do identify the main points for a summary essay. And continuing to talk about the body of the essay, there is customarily no conclusion to a summary essay. When you have summarized the source text, your summary essay is finished. Meaning, when you talk about the last point that happens at the end of the story, then that's it because you just summarized the end of the story. Do not add your own concluding paragraph unless your instructor specifies one, because that would mean in a sense, if you write a conclusion, then you are wrapping up with your own ideas, your own interpretations about what the text has said. Remember in a summary essay, you want to focus on what the author actually wrote. So do be advised by your instructor on whether or not to include a separate concluding paragraph, meaning separate from the end of the story or the article. All right, this has concluded my presentation on the summary essay. Thank you very much for listening and happy writing.